Please go to elithecomputerguy.com in order to view schematics, code, and more for the projects that you are learning about. Welcome back. So today I want to talk about IaaS or Infrastructure as a Service. So up until this point, we've talked about software as a service, we've talked about platform as a service, and now we will be talking about IaaS, Infrastructure as a Service. Now a lot of people get confused with Infrastructure as a Service and they say, I don't understand. What is the difference between IaaS, SaaS, and PaaS? And the important thing to understand about IaaS uh, versus, again, Software as a Service, or platform as a service is that with IaaS, basically you can't do anything with the services being provided unless it's built into a larger overall infrastructure. So when you look at something such as a software as a service, right? Software as a service is a product that your end users can actually use as soon as you swipe the credit card and create uh, the user accounts. So if you're using something like Gmail or QuickBooks Online or Salesforce or anything like that, Basically, you create the account, you create the users uh, for, the, for the business account, and then your users are actually interacting with that service. More or less, everything is there for them. If you look at something like platform as a service, now you got to be a little bit more technical with platform as a service, but you actually get a functional platform. So if you want to host a web application, a website, something like that, basically you have your coders sit down, they write the code, they upload that onto the platform as a service, and now you have have something functional to do whatever it is that you've coded to do. So a platform as a service is still something functional that is being sold to you. Uh, when you start looking at infrastructure as a service, basically you just get infrastructure. <laughs> If you tie that infrastructure into other things, you then get something functional for the end user or for yourself, but on its own, it's almost kind of sort of useless. Uh, so if we look at old school infrastructure as a service, you can look at something such as DNS, right? So you go to uh, hostgator.com, you go to godaddy.com, you go to wherever else, you go to a registrar, you buy your domain name, you know, elithecomputerguy.com, and then with that, you get your DNS configuration. So you can point your a records uh, you can po post your your subdomains you can do your MX records all of that kind of stuff right and that is infrastructure as a service so basically what you're doing is you're pointing the a record to a specific IP address you're, you're uh, pointing C names uh, to subdomains or to domain names and basically you're able to put all of these configurations into your DNS uh, record but then past that that's all you got, right? If you don't build a server and deploy a website, then DNS really isn't going to do anything for anybody, right? Your users are not going to be logging into DNS and doing anything, hopefully. They shouldn't be. They shouldn't be doing anything, right? Basically, DNS is just... DNS, right? I think about that with things like AWS Glacier. So AWS Glacier is a storage solution from Amazon that is absolutely awesome for off-site backups. So it's a low-cost storage solution uh, for backing up your infrastructure. So uh, or your servers. So let's say you're needing to back up your servers, you need to back up your databases. Basically, you need it someplace off-site um, that, again, if a tornado or something happens uh, and, and wipes out your building, you know your data is secure somewhere. Well, if you look at something like AWS Glacier, with AWS Glacier, all you get is the storage, right? This is not something like Google Drive. So Google Drive is software as a service. So what's the difference between Google Drive and something like AWS Storage then? Well, with Google Drive, right, when you create your Google Drive account for storage, you actually get a web interface, right? So you, you create the account, you create the account for your users, your users can log in uh, to, to the website and actually be able to interact with the, the data that's stored up there, the files, the folders. They can download things, they can upload things, they can put a little piece of synchronization software onto their computer to, to have their computer back up to, uh, to Google Drive, the whole nine yards. So when you look at Google Drive, the reason Google Drive is software as a service is because it is a complete product, it's a piece of software that you're simply paying for as a service. On the other hand, on the other hand, you deal with AWS Glacier or uh, any of the other AWS storage solutions, and all you get is storage, and they tell you how to connect to it. 
And then you can figure out how to do everything else, right? So if you're going to use something like AWS Glacier, they just give you the storage. They don't give you the software in order to connect to the storage. They don't give you the things so that your end users are able to do stuff with the storage. Basically, all they give you is storage. Now, this was a big deal about 10 years ago. So when AWS storage was still a pretty new thing and a lot of the IT people were like, yes, this is going to be awesome. Literally, one of the biggest issues we ran into, one of the biggest issues we ran into is we, we didn't know how to connect to it. Because again, if you're using FTP, doing something like FTP is relatively easy, right? There's all these other storage ways to, to connect with things like storage. When AWS Glacier came out or when AWS Storage Solutions came out, one of the big problems uh, a lot of IT people had is we wanted to use the, uh, the storage, but we weren't sure what products would allow us to actually use that storage. So if you're going to use something like AWS Glacier, basically what happens is you can have a backup solution on your server or on your, your storage solution or whatever else, and that backup uh, software will connect to AWS Glacier so that you can back up to Glacier. But AWS really doesn't provide you the functionality. What AWS does is it provides you the storage and it provides you how to connect. This is this is what your software needs to do in order to connect to our storage. Past that, you can figure it the hell out on your own. And so that's what we're talking about when we're talking about IAAS, infrastructure as a storage. You're thinking about things like basic things like DNS. You're thinking about things like load balancing. Load balancing is a, is a great uh, example of infrastructure as a service. So if you're going to load balance uh, traffic going to multiple servers, right, you can set up load balancing. But without the servers, and without the services set up on the servers and all the other stuff, that load balancing doesn't really do anything for you. And so that's what you're going to be thinking about with IAAS is all of these cloud services that can be provided to you that on their own, if you just have them, you just have that is basically worthless. But what you do is kind of like Legos. You plug all of these different uh, products, these infrastructure as a service solutions together, and then that's where you can get your overall infrastructure. So when we're talking about IAAS, that's the kind of thing that we're talking about. Now, when we're talking about infrastructure as a service, again, this is a kind of a concept in the technology world. And then you have different vendors that provide specific products. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to look and see what your specific situation requires. And then based off of that, you can go out and you can start looking at the different vendors and then you can start looking at the different products those vendors offer. Now, it is very important to be thinking about this, again, depending on what your specific requirements are, because the different different vendors uh, that are available, they many times will specialize in different product areas. Uh, so if you're trying to do things such as something like machine learning, uh, you may want to focus more on Microsoft Azure versus something like uh, IBM's uh, IAAS solutions. So one of the things you're really going to have to be thinking about is really what solutions are required for your uh, particular situation. And then from there, go and look at all the products and look at all the different vendors. And then again, as I say with a lot of this kind of stuff, it's simply a paint by numbers of, okay, I need this and I need this and I need this. And this company does all of those things. So therefore, I will buy that one company. Again, it is important in the cloud world that you do not become a, a some kind of fanboy. You don't say, I buy Microsoft or I buy AWS and I won't, I won't go with any other vendor. Because at the, other, in the end of the day, if AWS doesn't provide you uh, the services that you need, then frankly, you need to go with a different vendor. So this is something to think about. So with that, let's go over to the computer. Um, I'll show you uh, some of the different vendors out there. Again, we'll show you IBM, I'll show you Microsoft, and I'll show you AWS, just to kind of give you the idea of all the different kinds of, of services that are available with infrastructure as a service, so you can get a better idea how you might be able to implement this into your own environment. So to start with, we'll start with good old IBM. So it is important to remember that IBM exists. I know for a lot of young folks out there, IBM is a company from the 70s or 80s, and you probably don't think about it a lot anymore. But IBM really is pushing into the cloud computing sphere, and they have a lot of good products that are available. And especially if you're looking at deploying for an enterprise environment, they may be offering you things that other companies can't for whatever it is that you require. Now, when you start thinking about infrastructure, 
infrastructure as a service, again, remember, there's a lot of different types of services out there that you may need. Uh, you know, you've got the compute and you've got the network, you've got the databases, you've got the analytics. These are the types of things that you may normally think about, but something to be thinking about, again, in this modern world, is there are blockchain services that are available. There are IoT and mobile services that are available. There's AI and security services that are available. So again, if you don't necessarily want to spin up your own uh, solutions for things like artificial intelligence or blockchain or anything like that, you might be able to go to one of these uh, infrastructure as a service providers and actually simply be able to purchase a service from them that does whatever you need to accomplish. So again, if we go down, we take a look at things like compute. So again, bare metal servers, you know, cloud virtual servers, mass storage servers. They've got all kinds of different servers here. Those are things that you can be thinking about for, again, how you want to actually deploy your code into the real world. Uh, if we scroll down, you can see networking. So with networking, again, when you think about infrastructure as a service, things such as content delivery networks. Uh, so content delivery networks basically act as kind of like a caching service uh, for when people are trying to get to your content. So that might be something that's useful for you. Again, a load balancer. So actually using uh, one of their load balancers in order to, to balance traffic uh, to the servers that you have. Things like network security. So again, especially if you have uh, servers up in the cloud, traffic is going to be going to those servers. And if you're trying to think about, again, how to block ports, basically how to provide uh, more security for those virtual machines, uh, something to think about is simply to buy, purchase an infrastructure as a service uh, for things like network security. Uh, if we scroll down, we can see other things. Again, all kinds of different storage solutions here. Uh, they've got these packs. They've got management uh, options for you. Uh, security, uh, things like uh, app ID, add authentication to web and mobile apps, including through social login. So this, this may be a very important thing for you, right? You come up with a, the, the great idea for some kind of you know mobile or cloud, cloud product you want to give to your end users, but something to be very concerned about is how are you going to deal with the login process uh, for, for dealing with that application. So simply purchasing a service, such as like an app ID service from IBM, that may be a way to give you that authentication uh, functionality that you need without having to deal with the servers. Again, network security, SSL, uh, key protect, a whole bunch of different things. You have databases. So depending on what kind of databases you might be running, uh, anything from MySQL to MongoDB, all kinds of different databases. And analytics. So if you want to track the analytics for what's going on with your with products or services out in the real world. Uh, and then you have things such as AI. So they actually have AI services for you that you may want to tie into what you're doing. And then beyond that, again, IoT and mobile. So these are some of the things to be thinking about. These are some of the services that you can simply purchase or basically rent, you know, for a monthly fee from a company like IBM. And now you no longer have to worry about buying physical servers and figuring out where you're going to store the physical servers and worry about those damn CPU fans uh, <laughs> when they fail every once in a while. Uh, you can go over and you can take a look at Microsoft Azure. So Microsoft Azure offers just a whole crap ton of different things. And again, if you haven't thought about Microsoft Azure in a while, you may want to take a look at it. A lot of the kids nowadays, a lot of the youngins, they think they think everything is AWS, right? AWS or bust. Amazon is the greatest in the world. And again, nothing wrong with Amazon. AWS is great. But a lot of times they forget about companies such as IBM or things like Microsoft Azure. Microsoft Azure seems all stuffy and old. Uh, but realize, like Microsoft Azure has many, many services that they can provide you that may be very useful for you for whatever new products that you're, you're doing. Um, Azure bot services, auto suggest. Uh, they have things like image search, cognitive ser uh, services, add smart API capabilities to enable contextual interactions, content moderator, uh, data science, virtual machines, uh, Microsoft Genomics. I thought this was interesting. Power genome sequencing and research insights. Now this, again, and this is what I want you to understand about the modern world of being a technology professional and trying to figure out solutions for your specific company. Now, obviously, if you're in a construction company, you don't care about genomics, right? If you're in a fashion company, you don't care about genomics. But if you're in some kind of uh, like a some kind of like medical institution, something like basically having infrastructure as a service, genomics sequencing might actually be very very useful for you, very valuable for you. An uh, ink recognizer, an AI service that recognizes digital ink content, such as handwriting shapes and ink document layout. 
all kinds of different things. The speech translation, you scroll through, they've got uh, uh, analytics options for you. If you go down, you can take a look at things like media. So again, content delivery network, encoding, studio grade encoding at cloud scale. Um, Azure Media Player, Media Analytics, Media Services, Live and On Demand Streaming Services. So think about it. So if you're working for a company and the company goes, wow, you know, I really like all that stuff going on with YouTube, but I don't deal, want to deal with YouTube. <laughs> I don't trust YouTube. Uh, like literally, you could use these services here essentially to build some kind of internal system, much like YouTube for your company. And then since this is uh, Microsoft Azure, that could then tie into Active Directory and that can tie into a lot of the other things uh, within the Microsoft stack. Uh, beyond that, again, you can go down to things like security. Again, Azure Active Directory, synchronize on-premises directories and uh, enable single sign-on, uh, security center, VPN gateways, Azure DDoS protection. They've got all kinds of stuff there. So these, these are some of the services that are provided through Microsoft Azure. And then, of course, you go over to AWS. You go over, you take a look at their products. And again, they've got the same, you know, just a massive number of solutions that you may not have thought about. Um, and you can to actually implement these into your particular infrastructure relatively easily. Again, everything from Internet of Things, uh, AWS IoT Analytics, uh, IoT Core, a lot of different stuff there, uh, device management, media services. They have options here. Again, if you want to build your own like little internal YouTube uh, for your company or organization. And so they have solutions. But do you realize, again, this is all this is all individual products. It's kind of like when you're thinking about IaaS or any of these cloud services, it's like you're going to a store and so certain stores offer certain products and other stores offer other products. Sometimes they offer basically the same thing. Sometimes they offer very similar products with slight differences. It's like it's like the difference between going from Walmart to Target. Like Walmart and Target are relatively similar. But if you like a specific, you know, brand of ice cream, then you would want to go to one versus the other. Like if you see, you know, they've got AWS has all of these product offerings and Azure has many of the exact same product offerings. But again, they might be slightly different. Azure may have some that AWS doesn't. Uh, AWS may have some that Azure doesn't. Azure is going to work with the Microsoft stack most likely uh, better than AWS will. AWS may play you know, nicer with, with other vendors versus Azure. And then again, you've got some of these uh, other folks out there such as IBM, and they may offer solutions to you that might be more valuable for your particular enterprise. Enterprise. So these are some of the options that are available for you. And again, if you haven't looked at infrastructure as a service and what it might be able to do for your environment, I think you're probably missing out on a lot of solutions that could really help you. So that's a basic overview of infrastructure as a service and why it will be important for your environment. In the, in the current date and time, I can't imagine why you wouldn't be using a little, at least a little bit of infrastructure as a service at this point. Again, it is not like the old days. This is not you know 2010 to 2009 when simply infrastructure as a service was a new thing and so it wasn't built into a lot of products or connectivity wasn't built into a lot of products. But now the, the fact of the matter is that connectivity is built into many products and so using infrastructure as a service is rather a simple thing now. Again, it, it wasn't in the day. I, I remember sitting there going, wow, I really want to use X, Y, or Z. And we'd all be scratching our heads trying to figure out, <laughs> but how do we connect to it? I don't understand. Uh, but now, again, like something like AWS Gla Glacier, a lot of backup solutions will simply have the AWS Glacier connection built into them. So again, you simply swipe your credit card so that you can start using AWS Glacier. You then point your backup solution to AWS Glacier. You know, you encrypt your backup so, so no hackers can theoretically steal it or look at the information. You back it up to AWS Glacier. And now you have a, you know, a real-time, if you set it up that way, uh, basically off-site backup. And so you don't have to worry about a lot of the problems you had before about you know what to do with all your tape backups and make sure you have an offsite backup. And oh, did did the person actually take the offsite backup with them when they left the premises? Because again, that's one of the problems you run into the real world is you come up with uh, workflows for something like offsite backup. So okay, so this set of tapes will go home with some engineer. Well, you set that up, and then that engineer gets fired or quits. And then people forget to hand off that job to somebody else. And so all of a sudden what happens 
is the tapes are taken from from the uh, the server room and then they're put into another room and then the old ones are taken back to the server room and then they kind of just sit there again on the premises they should be leaving somebody should be taking those off site so they're secure but for some reason nobody takes them off site anymore and people forget like why do we put those tapes there anyway i don't know that's what we've always done right and so all of a sudden, uh, your off-site backup is no longer being taken off-site because, again, things just simply fell through the cracks. If you set up something like AWS Glacier just so your backup solution automatically will back up to Glacier, then you know you have that off-site backup solution and you don't have to worry about things such as, again, the, the, backup, the, the backup's not actually leaving the site. Again, something really to be thinking about is... Let's say I have the offsite backups, I put them in my car, and when they're in the car, the entire area gets flooded. <laughs> well, then, <laughs> well, they're offsite, they're in my car, but they still, right? And these are kinds of things, kinds of things to be thinking about. Again, things like that, things like basically like denial of service or different security services that may you, that you may use. There is a, there are a lot of services that are out there that are available for you that at this point in time, again, depending on what products you're using, really are simply point and click. Again, this is very simple if you just say, I'm using, okay, I have this product, I'm connecting to this service, here's my account information, and now everything is functioning relatively easily. It's not, it's not the old days of infrastructure as a service where you basically Basically had to engineer the solution yourself nowadays a lot of things you simply you know plug click add in your, your credentials and away you go so if you're not using IAS you really should be thinking about using it again possibly in in, in small ways uh, there's a big argument nowadays about the whole idea of you know should you really trust the cloud and again, I say don't trust anything. You know, distrust verify stay suspicious especially in the technology world so don't trust the cloud but also don't trust local infrastructure either. Don't trust anything, right? So, so have again, have your cloud backup. Have, and that's, the, that's where infrastructure as a service comes in because you can add some of these cloud services. You can gain that power. You can gain that affordability, but you can do it in specific ways where you're not risking uh, your entire infrastructure if something goes wrong. So this is something to be thinking about. So really, at the end of the day, when you're looking at the difference between uh, software as a service, platform as a service, and infrastructure as a service, infrastructure as a service is where you're simply given a service. And on the face of it, it's just not valuable until you start building it into other things. And when you build it into your offsite backup solution, when you build it into how your traffic gets routed, when you build it into some kind of compute solution or something like that, that's where IAAS comes in. So, as always, I enjoyed doing this video and look forward to seeing you on the next one.